loading up for YouTube. Okay, great. And oh, you're sharing screen, right? Yes. Okay. And we're live, right? Uh, working, setting, going. Okay. All right, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, Animatronics Dancing Scening Props. So my name is Keith Peffer. Um, I guess a quick little thing about me. I've been doing Christmas lights for, for a long time, to let's just say 10 plus years, and um, my own personal display for five years. And uh, I personally have been getting really into animatronics lately. Uh, I feel like uh, we've kind of pushed the limits on pixels, um, so to speak. You know, uh, it's become such a sit down and uh, watch, and sometimes even a struggle with having your audi audience understand that there's music tied to the whole thing as well. There's a lot of that disconnect. Um, and I feel like animatronics is just a missing piece of this, the puzzle that we, with, you know, our animated shows, our, our, you know, flashy blinky kind of uh, sequenced traditional shows. So um, I kind of, something I did last year, thanks to uh, really uh, collaboration between uh, David Peace and J.R. Matos and myself, we've kind of stabilized and figured out a good way to create animatronic type of uh, props that specifically for this um, demonstration is going to be um, something that you can, uh, something that will basically um, give an effect like it's dancing when it's singing. Um, and I'll show you how you're going to be setting that in X lights. And it's simple. All the, if you have lyrics tracks, you are already ready to go as far as the timing marks with the movement, the dancing. So we'll get into that. Um, first, um, just want to say that um, this room, we do not have a chat room. So you're going to need to unmute yourself. Feel free to unmute yourself anytime. Um, I am not the great at hearing, like the greatest at hearing. I, I, I drive forklifts for a living. So I am sort of hearing impaired. So if um, you need, I'm going to have to ask for you to repeat yourself a few times. Hopefully that's okay. Um, and, uh, this is an interactive room. So just, you know, feel free to speak up, uh, before I move on, does anybody have any questions? Okay, great. Um, so, uh, this is kind of a, a prop that, um, I made, uh, last year and hopefully the audio is coming through. It is nicely. So as you can see, this prop is moving only when the bulb is actually singing or when the bulb is lit up in this example so this is kind of an awesome kind of effect i actually got so many people um from my crowd uh last year that uh just focused on that prop alone there's a couple other animatronic props that i had a leaping deer for example but this one the combination of the bulb singing and it moving audience just kept coming to me and saying hey that thing is just awesome and uh people ended up just parking right in front of that prop and you know just focusing on that alone and you can kind of tell like i think the singing bulbs themselves with even out animatronics that's a, a driver for audiences you know i i found a couple years ago that that brings a lot of audiences in it keeps the communication going because they they immediately like they notice that they're like okay this thing is moving its mouth why is it moving its mouth and then they start thinking okay there's music involved into this you know a lot of times the the, the lights in the house blinking and a tune in sign is not enough for people to get that in their head that there's a, a, a correlation so um that animatronics could be used that way to to convey that there's more to your show uh please come in see the show enjoy it um, so this is one of my favorite new props and so many people really enjoyed it. Um, and then, so, uh, this is also our second day of the Christmas summit. And I just want to give a huge shout out to Brian McVeigh for handling the hosting duties for this room, this whole time, the last two days. Um, this is the last presentation, so I'm sure he's relieved to get some break. But yes. other than that, I also want to give a huge shout out to Ed Smith and the rest of the team. The, the team is so huge. I can't really go through the list. It's just, it's unfathomable. And I know that 
everyone in the community, they want to help out as well. So I know this is just going to be growing and get bigger and better. And as you can see, we almost have every single vendor out there. So what I ask for you is that you go out after today and you go and support these uh, vendors because they did a lot to make this event possible as well as the volunteers. I was going to also have more. I was going to do a joke. I was going to have like five other um, slides of, uh, of vendors and just be like, so you got to keep supporting those guys, <laughs> but you That'd got the perfect. point. All right. So uh, what you will need. So to do the basic animatronics type of setup, you're going to need basically a prop that you want to animate uh, a DC or AC motor. My preference is actually DC motors. Um, it's just that that's my preference uh, just because um, I already have kind of the DC power out there. I mean, you already have AC power out there too. So I, that's not a good enough excuse. It's just what I'm traditionally used to. Um, something I should have mentioned before is that a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be showing, uh, I did not invent or, or make or anything like this. This is something that you can really look at to the Halloween community that really pivoted or really kind of made all these kind of techniques and, and processes uh, standard. And so, um, you know, if you want to learn more about animatronics, moving props and stuff, look towards the Halloween community, because unfortunately, we haven't stepped it up enough in the Christmas community to really hit those um, tutorials yet. So hopefully we can get there. I know, you know, Tony Bigda uh, is a huge um, person with animatronics. JR is. There's a lot of people in this community. If you really look through that, uh, their heart is in, in, in animatronics. So. Another thing you're going to need is a motor mount kit. So um, companies like JR Matos sells a um, motor mount kit. Um, Fright Props sells a whole motor mount kit. Um, and you can also make your own. We will go over that. You're also going to need the, the really the heart of this whole process, which, you know, before this product, the Pixel 2 things, we really couldn't have done half of what we're able to do now. I mean, you could do it, but it was just so much more, you know, harder to do, just more having to make your own sketches with an Adreno or something like that, tie it in with relays. And it was, it was a lot, it was many pieces that this one single pro, uh, board does now. So a uh, huge shout out to Pixel 2 things. And then we're also going to need X lights. Uh, I'm sure Laura would also work, but my preference is X lights. That's where my heart is. All right. So um, the basics. So I'm going to show this quick little video. Um, like I said, the Halloween community, you know, they, they got the stuff down. So this, this really great video that was put out in 2007 that shows kind of the basic mechanics of a, um, a, standard DC type motor. And this example for this video is a, is a windshield wiper motor. Now uh, that's what I, that's my preferred DC motor, but um, there's also all kinds of, there's um, rotisserie motors or um, uh, deer motors if you like to use AC power. Um, so let's watch this quick little video and this will really show you 90% of the crust of what the techniques of this Wiper is. motors. They're an almost perfect way to motorize any kind of a haunt prop. However, some of the biggest concerns most people have is how do I get the kind of motion out of it that I want, particularly when it's a device that spends its life spinning in circles. So in this video, we'll try and explain different ways you can get different kinds of motion using a wiper motor. We'll remove the motor body, since it's just a big distraction, and concentrate on the crank arm, which is the only part that moves anyways. The first motion that's easy to use is the circular motion itself. If we stop it, and put an arm on the, as an extension, we can attach something to the end of the arm and simply have it moving around in a circle. For example, you could hang it off of a roof and attach a bat or a skeleton or something and just have it swinging wildly in a big circle over people's heads. The next motion to consider is a rocking motion. This is accomplished by attaching an arm to the crank arm, but letting the arm swivel freely. The far end of the arm is then attached to what you want to rock. For example, it could be a rocking chair, or an arm waving, or a tombstone, or even the shovel on a grave digger. This diagram helps show how it works. As the crank arm rotates, it pushes the arm outwards and then pulls it back in again. By having the base of your object stationary, the only thing it can do is swivel back and forth in a rocking motion.
need your rocker assembly. So uh, one quick little thing before we go to the next part of this video, this is the crust, the, the, the schematics of the singing, dancing prop. So right there, what you're seeing right here is what you need to basically create the mechanics of the, the dancing, singing prop. Um, so let's go on. To move a little more, try moving the contact point where the arm connects closer to the pivot point. The closer to the pivot point, the more your rocker arm will rock and roll. One last motion we'll look at is a piston action. This is identical to the pistons inside your car or a steam engine. In this case, we'll use a shorter flexible arm and another arm for a piston. In this case, the piston must be held between two guides that allows it to slide back and forth, but not move up and down. Now, as the crank turns, the arm will push it in and out, but instead of rocking, the piston will slide. This is great for actions such as coffin lids bumping up and down, things popping up from behind a tombstone, or any other number of items. Another item would be a leaping deer. Now, if it'll show you in a second, but if by changing this motion from instead of going left to right, but going up and down, you can create the motion of a leaping deer. Those are the basic motions you can get out of a wiper motor. Anything else is just a variation on a theme. And don't forget, you don't have to keep things oriented the way I've shown you here. You can turn things on their side and have the motion in a completely different direction. Experiment and play around. I'll bet you'll come up with all sorts of ideas. So before I go on, does anybody have any questions? That was an awesome video you chose for that. Yeah, where is that video? Because I've searched all over the web for videos to show the motion from a wiper motor. And I've never seen one that's that good. <laughs> yeah, no, this one is so great. I use this so many times for so many of my presentations because it really just spells it all out for you in a, a perfect way. I will have that link on the top of the parts list that will get updated either today or tomorrow on the virtual Christmas um, website. So, okay, because yeah. yeah, I've never seen it outlined that good. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so, you can see it now where like, here, let me change my camera. For I'm a chick and I can't figure this crap out. So guys have an advantage <laughs> over it. So no, no. Um, well, just different I'm, skills, different skills. I just look at it and scratch my head because I yeah. can't. I'm like, what? <laughs> so. I've been using wiper motors in my Halloween display for years. I honestly never even thought about using it in my Christmas display till yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, come on. Wow. It's, it's such a, um, now you're thinking about it, it's like no brainer, right? And, but yeah. now you cut, for me, it was always like, how do I really easily incorporate it into my system? I'm all like, I know the mechanics, but how do I easily incorporate it? And we'll get into that. And that really, that's what the Pixel 2 thing brought to the table. It made it such an easy, almost completely plug and play situation. Um, so really quick. So this is the deer leaping deer system. So like that last little image kind of showed that instead of going right to left, it's actually up and down. And instead of having a stationary type of board that the pipe is going through, there's a, I used another piece of PVC that actually can swivel. So that what you have is a little bit more movement. So while it's going, you not only have, well, I could just show you the video here. So it, it, as you can see in the, in the, uh, the video here the leaping deer now you get an actual motion of leaping and it's just the same mechanics as that video that last part of the video and all i did was instead of putting two pieces of wood or having that pivot point as a completely solid piece i have that as a, a piece that can move so then you have more movement so there's lots of things you can do with uh with the windshield wiper motor and so many different pivoted systems that you can do. There's, uh, there's another really great video I will put to also on. Uh, it's a long one. It's almost an hour long. And this guy goes through every single different way you can manipulate a windshield wiper motor and all kinds of different PVC type of methods of uh, constructing your mounting systems and stuff like that. That's 
a, a great system too. I find myself looking through that just to get inspiration, just to be reminded that you can do something. Um, so I'm definitely going to do that. I have a quick question. Yeah. Sorry if this is too basic or, or out of the realm of what you're talking about exactly, but um, how do you power a, um, a wiper motor like this? Yeah, I'll, 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 we'll get into that. So the, the Pixel 2 things makes it like plug and play, basically. What you're going to do is just like how you uh, power pixels off of a Pixel controller, you use a port. You're going to use a port off of the Pixel 2 things to power your motor. And it's really as, po as simple as connecting the negative and the positive um, to the port and, and to your motor. Hopefully that answers your question. And we will get to a slow, slow little uh, bird's eye view of uh, the Pixel 2 things and how you would have it wired up. Any other questions? How much do those run? The Pixel 2 things? No, the um, like motor. How much, the, the motors, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, let me look really quick. Uh, well, you can continue on. I'll bring that up. And um, yeah, GR Matos is one, but um, I know that it can range anywhere between thirty-five to twenty-five dollars to as cheap as fifteen. Um, you go to the junkyard and pick them up. Yeah, you can get them at the yeah, junkyard. I was going to say junkyard. Huh, yeah, okay. but I, I, buy, will... I buy them from Monster Guts because they have the parts that go with it, so you can easily convert it. Yeah, my, my preference is um, Matos Designs, Fright Props, and then uh, Monster. Uh, the only di difference why I have those ranges of preferences is that Matos Designs, their motor is super light, and it's got a pretty good amount of torque. It's also got the whole mounting system ready to go at a very affordable price, if Brian has that available. Um, $17.99. See, you can't, that's extremely uh, cheap. Uh, the next one is uh, Fright Props. And I like that one because the, the way that they're, the wires are hooked up, they're ready to go. Monster, another one, the wires are ready to go. But um, uh, so they're all just, they're, they both fit all their needs. And so it's kind of great that um, there's a lot of different choices you could do uh, as far as getting your motors. And then somebody also mentioned going to a junkyard and pulling it out of a, you know, a salvage yard. And that's also a very rewarding way to do it too. <laughs> I did that for one of my first ones. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, of course. Anything else uh, before I go? I have a question. Is the Pixel 2 things the only controller that you can use this with or can would a falcon work just as well or no um so currently the pixel two things is really the only board that's available that is plugged to pay play ready to go there is a kind of a do-it-yourself um uh, thing that's kind of coming from through the community um but it's really such in its early phases and it's nothing that i would recommend at this point um okay so pixels two things is the way to go then for yes. yeah okay I just brought up the freight props and and they're about ten bucks more, give or yeah. take. And the, a good thing about GR Matos too is that it comes with the waterproof connector, almost like a pigtail. It's got these really nice little plugs. So, and that's another thing you're kind of going to run into with a lot of this stuff is to you know how you're going to connect everything and to have that easy connection, one less thing you got to worry about, right? Definitely. So we already saw that video, so we don't need to, but, um, the, uh, so for the leaping deer, I kind of wanted to show you the parts list for the leaping deer. Cause it's really, it is such a small little list of parts that you can do it really, uh, pretty quick and like in half an hour to an hour. Um, so basically all you're going to need is a three quarter inch PVC pipe. Um, I always start with 10 foot lengths. I buy in 10 foot. So then from there, you're just going to cut four, uh, four and three fourth inch pieces. You know, uh, I don't want to go through the whole list here, but cut four, 10 inches. See, that's this piece is here. Uh, hang on, let me stop sharing for a second. If you pin my video now, um, you can see what I'm talking about. So if you pin your my video, now you can kind of follow along with what I was just talking about. So the uh, 10 foot pieces are these long pieces right here. You have four, um, three, uh, four and three fourths inches. These are these pieces right here and down here for supports. And then you just have a one inch um, T that's that pivot point right here. 
and um, and then you also just have a couple different um, uh, elbows, which really this is why I couldn't really do a full build today was these elbows. Um, this is something that needs to happen in this community. Um, we need an easier, ready to go mount. This is so simple. I mean, you could build it yourself, sure, but um, you know, there's definitely a potential if somebody wants to make like a you know really easy, ready to go kind of system. But it's hard to find these little elbows, um, especially in three quarter inches. Um, I find myself having to actually order them online a lot of the times, and uh, due to the situation that in the the world right now, it was difficult. So I'm sorry that that uh, if anybody had a difficult time finding those. Um, let me go back to sharing my screen here. There's a company online that does it for making furniture out of PVC, and okay. they have all those uh, three quarter inch, um, one inch, and inch and a half in those three inch or three way uh, corner members. Yeah, corner elbows. They're called so many different things. But yeah, the furniture places, because something for like this, uh, furniture ones are just fine. Uh, I don't really know the difference between the, the ones are strictly for water or whatever and for furniture, but I imagine for something like this, it's fine. Um, it should I, be because I bought the same thing and it was it's very sturdy and um, it's almost as thick as what the regular uh, Schedule 40 is. Yeah. No, it would have to be, right? Because it's furniture. You would think it would be even more yeah. strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you could also take the same kind of schematics and ideas and, you know, and apply metal to it. You know, you could take this whole thing and, and do EMT instead. And that finding EMT elbows are sometimes easier. Um, so. Uh, oh, sorry. Steve, somebody... you are, Steve, you're really broken up. Uh, can't understand anything you're saying. So uh, still your microphone's all messed up. Yeah, so this, we can't hear you, Steve. Sorry. So this is just to make the frame for the leaping deer. Where'd you get the deer? Okay, so the deer, I, I really like, um, let me go back uh, so we can actually talk about that for a second. So the deer here is um, actually from uh, Wizard of Wire. Um, if you guys don't know about Wizard of Wire, he sells, um, he sells these really awesome uh, receiver um, uh, boards now that you can attach directly to your meme well or HP power supplies. But it really how he came on the scene was his uh, ability to uh, create these um, wireframe um, props. And so one of my favorites of his is the, the deer and he calls them the leaping deer, but they don't leap. So animatronics makes them leap. <laughs> but yeah, that's where I got him is wizard of wire. Uh, they're quite affordable and you can get anywhere depending on how dense you want to, to um, put those pixels on. You can get, you know, I think somebody's done like 200 pixels on a deer. This one I think is only 78 or 100. Um, and I actually zip tied the wire, the, P, the PVC to the wire, um, but they're sorry, the pixels to the, um, to the wire. But you can, uh, he sells also 3D printed uh, clips that makes it really like, Simple. Yeah, I know. I just I, I just bought clips because I have some other wireframes that were just wireframes without uh, the pixels on them. Yeah, no, that's so. great. Yeah, check them out. It's uh, those deers are awesome. I think he sells them in a couple different sizes, but uh, this the one I have is is I think the standard forty inches, forty four inches. I think. Yeah, I, I I also have four singing light bulbs that I have been dying to make dance. Because yeah. when in my show, I actually call them singing, dancing light bulbs, mm -hmm. but all they do is sing right now. So I, yeah. and I'm really starting to get into wanting to do the animatronics and stuff. And I've, you know, trying to figure out, well, how do I do this? How do I make it work? You know, because yeah. I'm a huge Disney fan. So I love what Disney does with their stuff. And I'm like, I want to do that. I know I can do it. I, I just got to, you know, and, and so, so this is going to be very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And this is, I'm right there with you. Um, we need to do more of these things. This is a big passion. I love what Disney does. I love, you know, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. They're <laughs> such a, but it, it's, 
Yes, I am a huge Keith? fan of a huge fan of that ride. Yeah. <laughs> hey Keith. Yes. Those sleeping deer are out of stock. <laughs> oh dang. Well, he is yeah. quick about doing that. Sometimes he's not as quick about updating the website. So don't feel free to contact him on Facebook. I could confidently say that he's one of those guys that you can, he's just the friendliest guy in the world. So um, he will yeah. accommodate for, for you, or at least at the very least, let you know when it'll be available. And he would like to know too, because, you know, right now, due to the situation in the world right now, we go back to our vendors really quick. Everyone needs support. They need it just as much. So, amen. All right, so uh, now we're going to get to um, uh, mounting. So uh, there's a couple uh, do-it-yourself kind of ways of mounting. Uh, when I first kind of got into this, the Halloween guys, they were doing these little uh, base uh, post bases as the uh, way to kind of secure uh, the mount, or sorry, the motor to um, the rest of your um, your system. And so... Uh, I highly recommend that uh, as a, a quick little intro to it. it it's uh, it does require some drilling, so that's a downside. Uh, you will also probably need a steel angle uh, brace as well to kind of get those right angles, those 90 degree angles to wrap around something like PVC pipe. Now, something that's kind of brand new is Matos's designs a mount. Now, again, the motor is very light. So uh, you can kind of get into better positions with the motor. You can kind of be at a, a different angle than you can with the heavier motors that you're going to get from Fright Props or Monster. They're going to be, uh, those motors are a lot heavier. So you have to balance them a little bit more. Now with the Matos designs, it's a lot lighter. So you can kind of go put it almost anywhere you want. And, and trial and error is the, is the win for animatronics, by the way. If you... Just try it, see how it works, and then adjust or, you know, keep it as it is. Um, this stuff, animatronics is such a, um, you you know, what works for me necessarily might not work for you, depending on what prop you're going to be using and stuff like that. So this is a lot of uh, tinkering. Um, and it's going to be fun. It could be just as simple as, like, you know, finding the right ful fulcrum points, you know, that you want your pivots. You know, that's just fun in itself. I, you know, we, in the video, they talked about, hey, if you bring that focal point down where the pivot is, you're going to get more of a rocking motion. Wow. I could think of all kinds of interesting aspects of that where I might want a, more of a rocking motion from one prop or m less of a motion on the other one. And knowing that kind of information and, you know, your prop's going to be a little bit different. It, weight is also something you're going to take into account. And this is something that the Halloween guys have to deal with as well. When you're building up a prop and you're mounting everything, do it while do the mounting when the prop's complete. Like what I mean is have the pixels in it. Because if you set up everything and put your prop on the, the, the mounting system and it's you're good to go without the pixels, that's not good enough because the pixels are going to weigh quite a bit and that's going to change everything. So you might have to adjust your focal points or your, your pivot points depending on the weight of your prop. So um, it's a good idea to have many different uh, versatile uh, mounting systems. And the cool thing about JR Matos's um, mounting system here is that you can use these U-bolts and you can actually just easily attach it to like a, um, a one inch or three quarter inch uh, EMT or steel pipe, a fence post, for example. And you can create really awesome uh, systems where you just actually have just the pipe going into the ground and then an L coming out of that that has your, 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 your focal point, your pivot point. And so, I mean, there, like, again, there's a lot of potential for some, some, you know, vendors maybe in the future. Um, the also you're going to need is a cam extension, uh, something that you're always going to need. Uh, you don't want to connect the motor, uh, the PVC directly to the, the spindle part of the motor. You want to have some kind of cam. Um, so then you can have more movement and more, uh, control over your prop. Um, so the do do yourself way is just easily using three fourth inch uh, by uh, one eighth inch, and then they come in lengths by 40, 48 inches to like as far as like ten feet. Aluminum flat bar, and you're gonna need to you know cut that up and drill so it looks like this kind of of a cam extension design, or you can get one pre-made from Matos Designs. 
Um, before I go on, does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, okay, so I have a question. As a newbie to this, it does Matos Design do like the whole bundle that they'll that they give you the whole bundle with all the parts and everything? The they so far they have the, the mount, the cam extension, the motor, and the motor itself has all the pigtail attachments, everything like that. The only thing that's missing is just a frame. And I know that's it's coming. It's been something in the works. And you know, I know that uh, Fright Props has a, a whole um, kind of kits set up where the whole frames are already built as well. Um, but that's coming. I, I, like I said, that's something that the, the, the vendors, there's a potential there, you know? Um, it's such a do it yourself, especially on the Christmas side, that uh, there isn't something like that yet. Well, but, but, but the frame is mostly all PVC parts that you can oh, yeah. build yourself and oh, put yeah. them together just having the schematic. So, yeah. I, yeah, because for me, like for me doing the animatronic stuff, I really don't have like metal drills and stuff yeah. like that in order to do those, those kind of parts. I mean, yeah, I have PVC cutters because I use PVC all the time. So, and I'm cutting different sizes and stuff for what I need. So, so for that, I have that side of it, but yeah, like for, like I was mentioning for the metal parts and stuff, I, I, I don't have those kind of tools. I'm, so, so getting somebody to have it like <clears throat> Mattos, Mattos would have it all, all of those metal pieces where I can just go to like Home Depot or whatever and pick up an, uh, a fence post or whatever, you yes. know, to, uh, to, to finish building it off or whatever. The, he has... Go, he oh, has sorry. that ready to go that that is set up and i agree 100 percent. you know this cam extension it is i made all my first cam extensions myself it is such a hassle you have to get you know i bought a, a drill press almost just for this you know just so i can get the right angle and no one ha should have to do that right so right. <laughs> matt those designs really you know came is coming into the fold to do you know he's, he's going to provide those kind of already ready to go he's going to have this mount so exactly like you said, all you're going to need to grab is the PVC, the fence post, and a couple of little um, screws, and that's about it. Now, so so his kit that he's doing will either do the leaping gear mm -hmm. or the or the singing light bulb, uh, yeah, and, and I'm imagining it'll do anything else as long that you know as long as you build the PVC frame for it, you know you can use this kit and build make everything else anything else that you want to. Do the same thing with exactly exactly all those mechanics by the way keith that he's got about he's running a sale on all of his prop motors um 12 and 14 dollars off this week who's that that that's matters oh yes yes because because of this thing uh, going yeah. on today right yep so, so so and you want to use the and w which motor is he selling he's selling the windshield motor right yes Okay, and, and that was probably the best motor to probably use for a lot of this stuff, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's it's plug and Yeah, it's definitely the way to okay. go. Okay. All right. Thanks. You're One thing, the, the motors are 12 volt DC, which is ideal. Yes, you yeah. to get that good torque and everything yeah. for this. To move these pixel props, you're going to have a need a high torque motor. That's why I love um, these windshield wiper motors. You're not going to get anything higher torque. Which is why you will probably also need the pixel the pixel to things board because it's got the 12 volt DC on it. Yeah. Well, that actually can do a, a wide range of different, but yes, it, it has the, the, the plug part for it to, to, to make it as plug as play as you can get. The other thing that I use is motion sensors hooked yes. up to them and also the rheostats and the rheostat. All it does is slow the motor down. You can get it as fast as you want or as slow as you want, depending on the prop that you're using. So I can actually show you how we're going to be able to control the speed of the motor, the prop using X lights and how you can actually in something like a singing bulb where you can, you know, the song is going to be a little slow, like the beginning of the song. So you're going to have your guys kind of going a little bit slower with the beat, but then the drop, right? Doom, to doom, to doom. Then you have more movement, right? That's interactive. <laughs> oh and that would be God. great for X lights. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And um, Keith gets excited about that. <laughs> I do. But I have a question. So you don't have, you can do, you can convert this to AC, right? I mean, oh, yes. The you plug can, that comes with it, you can hook into an extension cord and just plug it into the Pixel 2 things, right? 
Because that's uh, the way I. Yeah, he has an AC board. And yeah, I have the AC board. I already have props running off the AC board. Yeah. Um, I think I was one of the first people to use it last year, and I caught it on fire. So me and me and him are been thick as thieves because I caught it on fire. Yeah, yeah. I'm famous for catching it on fire. But anyway, um, I mean, we need to put Jackie and Sub Rob together. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it was an exciting moment. Um, but anyway, um, so I just want to make sure I can hook this to an extension cord and just plug it in because that's really what I want to do. I don't want to mess with DC because I caught the board on fire. I really don't want to be messing with that because I'm I'm not that smart. So that yeah, is for me is better. you're going to have to find a, an AC motor. Uh, a deer motor is is uh, a, a, a AC motor. Yeah, I have a couple of those, but are those going to have enough? Um, it, you're going to have to experiment with the focal points. Okay. You're going to probably have to bring the motor higher up on your prop. And it, so the point of the focal points are going to be higher. You know, you can't bring, what I mean by that is if we go back to the video. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So. What I mean by all that, what I was just saying is that what you're going to maybe have to find is you're going to have to bring these two points right here higher up. The higher you go, you're going to get less movement, but there's going to be less torque you're going to need to make the movement. So you might have to bring those up. And then you can also play with bringing this up and then dropping that down a little bit to get that rocking motion. So you can still get a lot of rocking motion, but you're just going to have to play with that. You're going to have to play with maybe bring that up a little bit, making it a little lower. Well, I wouldn't suggest lower. Um, we with uh, GR Mattis is when you get into the huge singing props that are like up to like four feet tall. Sorry, I'm not six feet. So you get up to like four feet tall. They um, to get those guys moving and stuff like that. You got to have the motor almost at like four feet, or sorry, almost at like three feet height. Whereas the motor that I actually have in the demonstration I have here, you can see that the motor is almost at ground level. It's about six inches up. And so that just is because the motor has just a little bit more torque to, to, to push it. Um, if, if this was, if I was struggling, like if I built this and I found that I was struggling with the movement, all I would do is I would bring this higher up. I'd bring the motor higher up and adjust the pivot point right there and then, and see what happens. I think Monster Guts has one that plugs in. They have a package where you can actually wire it to. So I might have to go with that because of what I want to do. Because I, I really don't want to mess with DC. So, okay. Yeah. Jack, then, is yours connected to X lights or is it just running all the time? It's a, connected to X lights. It's, it's connected to X lights. Yeah. It's totally tied in with the sequence. So yeah. whatever the sequence is playing, it's it, it, it animates with it. Yeah, right now I have my pixel to things animating a dancing skeleton and a Frankenstein that moves his arms. That's what I did last year. So, yeah. and it turns on to the sequence. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what's great about the pixel two things, you know, just- I love it. Oh, great. <laughs> it's so awesome. I want to tell a quick little story. So when um, the pixel two things was like early development, you know, JR and I kind of, kind of heard about it. People in the community kind of heard about it and we were just like, we're both like just already thinking about ideas, what we wanted to do. And we were driving actually to Southern California for their mini, I think last year or year before. And, uh, and we're talking, Hey, did you hear about this, this board David's making? We're just like, yeah, yeah. And I wanted to talk about my, my grandma comes and sees my show every year and she loves the singing bowl. She just loves the idea of these, the, not the bowl. They weren't moving at the time. It was just them singing. And she told me, she's like, I, she was telling a friend, she, I overheard her. She was like, Oh, I love my grandson. She, he does this whole, uh, these bulbs that dance and they sing. And I'm all like, they don't dance, but God dang, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, uh, that's what, when we were driving down there, I was like, I need to figure out a way to make these things dance. And Jer had amazing, great idea for his system, which, um, you know, this idea of basically um, uh, it, it, something, I don't think you have not seen it before, and this is completely JR's idea, so I don't want to totally butcher it, but the idea is that um, 
a lot of these props, these singing props, you're not going to use them all the time, right? There maybe you'll have a few songs and then otherwise they're just kind of like this white or black or the colored piece of, of, of coral uh, that's just in your yard, not doing anything. So his idea was, was really brilliant is to actually have the singing bowl lie down when it's not singing and then pop up when it needs to sing. And then you can have that rocking motion and you know, boop, Oop, rocking motion. So that's, that's, uh, I mean, and then you can have a situation where you can have those bulbs up on the roof, for example, and then it's like, boom, they're down when they, you don't have to worry about wind or anything like that. I mean, there's a lot of potential, uh, with that kind of design. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, so, uh, the rocker dancer, this is kind of what you're going to need to make a rocker dancer. So the rocker, um, again, this design, the frame for the rocker is something that the Halloween community uh, has done for a long time. It actually comes from making a rocking chair for, um, a, a, you know, maybe like a, a, you have a rocker on um, right by your front door. So then when somebody walks up to the, you know, to get candy up to the front door, you have maybe a sensor. And then the, all of a sudden that the rocker moves. So that's kind of where this rocker, uh, this framework kind of came from. So if you ever want to kind of you know, figure out a different way to make the rocker, um, you know, Google, uh, basically Halloween, uh, prop motor rocker, and you can see all kinds of really great like designs. So this is my kind of, um, way of doing it. And the result is a very simple, um, what am I trying to do here? There. Um, so uh, what am I doing here? So um, what you end up with is this uh, prop. Um, and I'm sorry, cause it's gonna sing for a second here. And you're gonna hear the audio, I'm sure. But um, so now we have this motion, this motor here that is, uh, it's, it's, it's just a simple rocker system. Um, all it really has is your, uh, your windshield wiper motor and then a can extension and then just a couple focal points to keep everything kind of stable. And then that's really it. Um, so uh, that is the rocker, the dancer. Before I go on, does anybody have any other questions about the rocker? I will have all this on the, um, the website. Okay, so let's get into the heart of the show. Everyone's going kind of wondering. We all get the idea. You have to build a frame. You got pivot points. You have a motor. Da 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 da. How do I get this thing going, Keith? Well, you're going to need the heart of the system, which is the Pixel Two Things. On the left, we have the Pixel Two Things AC board, and then you also have the Pixel Two Things DC board. You use the DC board for DC motors, and you use the AC for AC type of props. So, just a quick little thing. Um, the Pixel 2 DC line of boards allow you to drive dimmable DC outputs as well as servos from a WS2811 Pixel line. And the same with the AC, except instead of driving dimmable uh, DC, you can drive dimmable high voltage AC outputs. Um, both boards are powered by 5 volt, 12 volt, or 20 volt, 24 volt power in their existing Pixel wiring. So what that basically means is that if what you already have a line of pixel uh, data going out to your prop, why don't you just tie into that pixel information and drive your motors? And that's what the Pixel 2 Things does. It's an X, there's no external configuration that's needed. These boards are plug and play. So anybody have any questions about the Pixel 2 Things? I'm going to show my camera. Okay, to... so I, 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 I do have a question. Go for it. So I am primarily a Falcon controller person. Yes. Should I possibly be looking at these boards? Will, will these boards do pretty much the same thing as the Falcon boards in addition to doing all doing this additional stuff? No, no, it's, it's not a pixel uh, controller. It, it, it all it does is it allows you to uh, tie into your existing pixel data line. 
So this, this doesn't uh, replace or substitute the Falcon controller. You will need the Falcon controller to drive the pixels and the pixel data to the Pixel 2 things. Really quick, I'm going to put my gain up a little bit. So let me know if you can hear me. So I'm going to go to the ground for a second here. But so if you can hear me. Uh, yeah, we got you. All right, great. So this is really just a really quick little uh, photo. If you can see on my, if you pin my video, oops, let me turn off the um, screen sharing. There you go. Now you can pin my video if you want. So, and hopefully you can kind of see this rat nest of a thing I got here. What you got here is um, actually, you know what? I'm going to make this easier for everyone. Because I'm sure everyone doesn't want to see my rat's nest. They could just, I got a good photo here. All right, putting my game back down. All right, so, um, all right, so this is the Pixel 2 things. I'm using a DC board. So what we have right here on the top right area, I'm sharing my screen again, is the WS2811 um, port. So what you're going to do is um, from your uh, already existing pixel line, you know, the information that's coming from the Falcon that you're driving your pixels from, at that end of the line, you can then attach that pixel end of that strip to this port right here. And that allows you to send the pixel data to the pixel two things. And the pixel two things could then use that pixel data to drive uh, your motors or your props off the port. The Pixel 2 things, how it works is it basically, um, why it's so non-configurable, why there's no configuration is it because the X lights and all this software, it just sees this board as three pixels because each port is red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. So there you go. That's three pixels right there. And I'm going to show this in X lights, so hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. But through the AC board, you basically are using up three pixels worth of data. And then on your DC board, you're actually using two, three, four, five, because you, has, you also have six um, servo ports over here. Does anybody have any other questions? So yeah, you will need a still gonna, raised hand. Scott raised his hand. You have a question? So, so basically on this, um, so on the DC board, those two outer pins are power. I guess that's to drive what's hooked up to those three pixel configuration ports. Yeah, so right here on the bottom left of the DC board, that is your um, five volt, 12 or 12 volt or 24 volt power that you're driving these ports out of. So if you wanted to, if you were, let's take an example, if you're driving 12 volts on your pixels, but you wanted to drive five or 24 volt uh, motors, you can tap into, you bring a whole new line of power right there. So how many amps can each one of these ports put, put out? 10. We know? 10 amps? Okay. It's, it's limited to 10. I'm thinking about driving a winch motor to cause a Santa Claus and reindeer to go across my yard up on a supported wire. So please oh. contact David Peace about that because he actually had his, he used a winch mode. This actually, the Pixel 2 things was invented because you wanted to create, use something with a winch motor. And so uh, I, I don't, he created this whole system where he wanted his uh, mega tree to pop up, jump up oh, and I then go that. down. Yep, I remember seeing that. Yeah, and that's he invented the Pixel Two things to do that because he needed to have it. You know, he wanted it made sense to him, right? I mean, I already have I'm driving data, pixel yeah. data to the Mega Tree. Why would I complicate things any more than I have to? So, yeah, because you're just so, turning on and off signals to it, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah and X lights. That's all it sees is is that all I'm doing is if I want to turn this port one on, as I'm saying on red. And then for how long I want it red. And then as far as controlling the motor is speed, it's the brightness. So if I wanted to go 40% speed, 40% brightness. 
Yeah, so I have the Pixel to two things AC. I don't have the DC board, but I think that's in my future. Yes, <laughs> so. gotta have both. Collect them all. So. Yeah. So, so the question that I have, I'm sorry, I missed it. Which port do you? So, so basically, you have a Falcon controller that's doing your your pixels, yeah. and then you come off of that controller to this controller. Yeah. So let me go down here. So at let me put the game back up. There you go. All right. So as you can see, I got a receiver here, right? This is a Falcon receiver. You guys I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You, you're sharing. So I get, I got this little window. Okay. I'll fix that right now. <laughs> we're good now. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Okay, cool. Hey, no problem. Let me, thank you for letting me know. Um, I'm just going to adjust my mic a little bit. There we go. All right. So, um, as you can see here, I got a 12 volt power supply. And on top of that, I have a uh, Falcon receiver. It's a smart receiver. It does not matter. Any receiver works. But the pixel down, I'm using port four right here. So the, the data that's coming, the, the three uh, cables that are coming off of this port go directly into the pixel two things. You don't need to do it that way though. You can also have it going, you can also have a run of pixels and then off of like 100 pixels or so, then go into the Pixel 2 things. But for the basics of it, yes, you're going to have to have a, a, a Pixel controller, you know, bringing your Pixel data to the Falcon 2 thing, the Falcon 2, the Pixel 2 things. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, that's, hopefully that answers your question there. It, it does. I'm sure I'll show I'll have more questions as I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm so there. actually, you could have the Pixel 2 thing right at the end of your lights at the end of your bulb, singing bulb. Yep. As like your 101th whatever, or 102, 103, whatever. Yeah, it'd so, be like. So, it, so it, how, would you how would you wire that then? How would you wire it? Yeah, I mean, I mean if, if, you're, if your last Pixel is last pixel end how, how do you wire that into the the board well i would just yeah i don't know well out of the controller you got your plus and minus and data mm -hmm. that's being fed into the um what boards what's the red boards called again uh, pixel, pixel two things pixel, pixel, pixel two, two things. things so you're actually supplying the pixel two things with, with pixel data pixel data and power if you're using all three wires, that's plus, minus, and data. Yes, but I will say that um, the power that comes to that will not be enough to drive the motors. So you have Correct. to yeah, it's just a, back. It's a trigger. Yeah, it's yeah. just a trigger. Okay, yeah, so I'll probably want to do it this way in order to drive the motor and stuff. I, I did, like, it's, it's fine to daisy chain because this is kind of what he designed it for to have the potential of going directly off of a port of the of the falcon but you can also have it at the end of a pixel line it's just more versatility if you needed to apply this just depends on your setup but yeah i preferred going right off of the port um that way i already have the 12 volt power supply for the receiver i can piggyback off of that for my motor can you i noticed you put it in one port in the pixel to um board can you daisy chain them do they are they addressable yes. each one of those or is each one of them have to be their own separate port off the uh, say let's just say falcon um i don't know if i'm understanding like a pixel a pixel you can have a string of 100 yes um the falcon knows that it's one two three four five no, you would have to tell the Falcon that out of the, so I, in your example, I have a hundred pixels and then I have the pixel two things. Then I'm going to tell in my Falcon, I'm going to say on that string of a uh, hundred pixels, I have a um, hundred pixels times three, it's 300 plus the other 15 channels. Cause you have five other um, pixels here. So it'd be right. 315 channels on that one single port. Got you right. So, so how would you feed how would you feed that board coming off of your smart receiver, say? 
I have what, how I have it is is just directly. Um, I have I it, it, the receiver has twelve volts gain power to it, so I oh, just I bring that twelve volts to this part of the the Pixel Two things, the port, the import, and then that will power the motors as well. All right, I must have saw something wrong. There's only two wire going into that. Let me uh, change, shut my screen off. And um, let's see. Sorry, I didn't see the board very well. It's, it's quite right. Uh, for me, it's dim as all heck. Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah there it is. Too. So you can see right here that this power, this is two wires. It's going right to our 12 volt power supply right here. Yep. So that allows me to power the motors with a good amount of power. There are your outputs on that side. Yep. Yep. Right here. That's so your that, input. It's your input, but it's also my output. I can also I also piggyback. I have a pigtail that comes out here. It goes there, so I can also attach a few pixel props to it too. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah you do so data. X lights. You tell X lights, hey, there's pixel ninety nine, and then number one hundred is the pixels to um, board. Exactly. Okay. Any other questions before we get to X lights and setting it up? Good, good to note that the when you showed people that to make sure they understand that the power connection on the left hand side is for the first nine ports and the power connection on the far right hand side is for the server servo controllers. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is totally a good point. Yep. Yeah. And they also, that's, that gives you an advantage for servos. So we didn't really talk about servos at all on this, but servos are a great way to do miniature kind of animatronics, you know, doing like little tiny things of movement, skeletons moving, for example. Um, so those voltages are, are different. They don't have 12 volt uh, servo motors. They're anywhere between six to five volts. So that you're going to want to bring, that's why it has a different port than the other nine, because you're going to want to change your voltages depending on the servo. So you can still put a uh, 12 volt uh, pixel or five volt, even pixels on the incoming from the Falcon, a 12 volt on the left hand port to run motors and another and five yeah. volts on the servos. <laughs> yeah, or six volts on so, the servos. So yeah. This can get confusing. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's all math, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, okay, uh, thank you. I just want to make sure I was. Yeah, and, and uh, we're, talking, across. we're talking a lot about the DC board. Uh, that's because my experience is, with is the DC board. The AC board has uh, quite a bit more. Uh, you really have to be very cautious about the power draw. That's why when somebody was mentioning a winch, I mentioned immediately to please talk to David because those are his kind of questions, these high powered kind of motors. Uh, Tony Bigda is also a great guy for resources for that stuff. So you so. could actually use, um, um, so if you're worried about the power draw, does that mean that you could actually use a relay? Uh, yeah. On that port to pull down your. Um, yeah. Yeah, you could. The, uh, we actually. Trigger. Yeah, we you could. We did a little bit of experimenting for a project where um, we we used. Uh, yeah, we did something like that. It was very. Freaky. Did Robert okay. Petty do a? Uh, was it a power saw with a board? Yeah, that. But like, <laughs> he's, he's talking about like you know then hooking up another. You know, re using a relay to activate those things, but having the Pixel Two things to activate the relay. <laughs> so, oh, I got you. Yeah, so right. we've done we've done those before, and we've done even more complicated things where it's like you want that relay to do different things too. Um, like okay, oh, yeah. So well, that yeah. way you can put more right. power through it, right, with the relay than uh -huh. the board can handle. Yeah, so it's the relay. The amps through it or something. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So now we're going to get to the brains of the system. So the heart is the Pixel 2 things. Our brains are the uh, X lights. So uh, first, I'm just going to kind of 
get uh, into X lights really quick. Um, so everyone kind of knows about X lights. I hope they know the the setup tab or now called the controllers tab. And then we have the layout tab and then you got your sequencer. So um, this is kind of my mock-up layout um, that I have here. And let's see. I know zero about X lights. Oh, it's okay. I will walk. Any questions you have, I'll try to help you as best as I can. Um, okay, so first thing we need to do is find the Pixel 2 things. Okay, so the Pixel 2 things, how you set it up in X Lights, there's a couple different ways you could do it. You can do it as just a pixel strand. So you, um, you know, a single line, you know, worth the pixels. You tell it, you know, how many pixels. You remember each. The pixel two things, the DC is just equivalent to five pixels. So you would put five in that example right here. Or if you were using the um, the AC board, it would be three. So that that's one way of doing it. I don't really like doing that because it doesn't really represent the ports. All you're seeing is three dots, not not the, the, the ports of the, pic, the pixel two things. The other thing is you could do block channels. So block channels are this little guy right here. And this allows you to define a series of channels um, in X lights. So this makes it really easy because each dot is actually a channel. So in our example here, um, X lights, uh, sorry, um, the pixel two things, I have basically port one is red, port two is green and so on and so forth. And then we also have the servos at the bottom here. So that's that's how you set up uh, pixel two things. All you do is you do a block channel, drop it down. You tell it how many channels or how many ports on the pixel two things. There's 15, so you put in 15. And you can go, you can keep these white. I just, for simplistic sake, I, I know that the first port is red. I know the next one is green and so on and so forth. And that just keeps it kind of visually apparent. So then when I drop, when I get into the sequencing part and I drop an on effect, X lights knows what kind of on I want, what color I want. So I don't have to go in later and be go to that port and say, no, don't go green on red. It's red on green. Anyway, so close that. Anybody have any questions about how uh, really quick, how the pixel two things was set up? It's a heck of a lot easier than what I thought it was. Where do you get the block? Uh, what was that block range or? Yeah, it's actually called a channel block. It's channel right block. up here. It's the third, okay. it's third right by the candy in. canes. Okay. Yeah, so all you do is just click on that, drop it in. If you got a DC board, it's 15 channels. If you got a uh, AC board, it's nine channels. And then that's it. And then each one of these dots represents a port of the pixel two things. That's it. So it'd be cool if X-Lights had like a, you know, I mean, somebody could create a custom model for Pixel 2 things and you drop it in, but that, that's just as easy. Going back. Okay. So any other questions about setting up the Pixel 2 things in X-Lights? Okay. Well, let's get into sequencing. How about that? So Right now, I'm gonna for this example, I'm going to use the free uh, two years ago the great um, the X lights around the world sequence, the greatest show. Um, that was one of my favorite sequences a couple years ago. I'm sure a lot of people did, so I figured this would be a good one for example. And you can also really see that it came with free lyric tracks, right? It's a free sequence, comes with free lyric tracks, so this is perfect for this kind of example. Um, so what all I did was, here we are, we have the timing marks, we have the lyric tracks right here. That breaks down into all kind of uh, phonomics, uh, basically A, A, O, that moves the mouth movements. Um, and then right here down at our pixel, or our, a, um, our bulb, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to render this. There we go. All right. So with this bulb now we have um, uh, we have it set up. So then the timing track it's looking for is the ensemble, and uh, so the the singing bulb set up. Singing bulbs are always the same. Um, if you don't know how to set the singing bulb up, uh, suggest watching another video. This isn't the one for that. 
Um, but with your timing marks that you already have from, um, uh, from your singing tracks, you can use that information to create the dancing effects for your animatronics. So here I have the pixel two thins. Usually in next lights, your block channels are gonna look like this, one single line. You need to double click on it and it's gonna show you all the channels, all the strands as X lights calls it. And each strand being a, a port on the pixel two thins. So if you want to activate the whole pixel two thins, you grab like an on effect and you would put it here at the top and then that will turn on all the ports on your pixel two thins. Um, and uh, so that's one way of doing it, but that doesn't really give you the control that you want. You know, what happens if you wanted to have multiple different motored props, you have a whole ensemble of teams of singing bulbs going off and you have your lead singer and everything. You could still do that um, using a, a system like this because you can the drop something down like the on effect onto the third port, which is blue. And why are you, there you go. And now the port three will then activate. I don't have anything hooked up to port three, but that's the example. So um, now I have um, my port set up in X lights. I have the pixel two things in my sequence and I have my timing marks already set up with my lyric tracks and my singing bulbs. Now I want to activate the, um, the pixel two thing. So I'm going to delete that so you can kind of see how I created that. So how I did that was I, all I did was I turned off the timing marks. You do that by clicking this little button here to turn off your timing marks. And then I go and highlight all the singing bulbs timing marks from my already existing singing bulb that I want to dance because I'm just, I want this bulb just to dance when it's singing. Now I'm going to activate the singing, the timing tracks again. I'm going to go to the port that the singing bulb is attached to, which that one again is, hang on, it is green. So we're just going to go and copy and paste. So that pasted in all the uh, singing tracks, the timing tracks for, um, and all the, the singing effects to that port, the, the second port where our uh, rocker is set up. Now it's not going to do anything. This with this, uh, the effect, the singing bulb, that's not enough to create, to make the pixel two things go. So what we need to do it now is we're gonna highlight all this and we're gonna go over to the on effect, go to on. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, bulk edit, choose on, boom. And it just changed all the effects to, uh, to, to, to on and green, except this one. Why did you not go green? Well, I'm just gonna manual make them green. I'm not gonna think about it. So there, boom, all of them are now green. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now if I um, play this, let's render it first. And I'm going to press play and I'm gonna Stop sharing my screen so then you can see the motor moving and the, the bulb singing. And then after that, I will mount the bulb to the, the frame so then you can actually see them sing. Now, Keith, you could have also imported too, couldn't you? Yes, I'll show you how to do that too. Okay. Yeah, that's actually a lot easier, wouldn't it yeah, be? Yeah, if you import the, uh, the bulb and the uh, pixel to thing at the same time. Yeah. All right, so there you go. So hopefully the audio is coming through. I didn't hear anything, Keith. Oh, well, you guys know the song. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we see the lights. We see the movement. Yeah, yeah. So what's happening right now is the when yeah, I'll share my screen real quick. So what's happening is, is when this time mark, when this line goes over the time mark, then the pixel two things activates the mix movement and the singing bulb is singing. Now if anybody has any questions while I'm mounting, um, feel free to ask. Uh, if there's no questions for Keith right now, uh, I have all the numbers input for the raffle giveaway at the end. Uh, Jackie, Ralph, and Randy at the bottom 
if you haven't already won a prize, please put your uh, VCS number in there and I'll get you guys input it as well. If you've already won, then no big deal because you only win one prize at a time. Okay. Um, so before I go and actually show you, because I just turned it on and he was rocking a little too fast. So I wanted to, I didn't talk about speed. So we need to, whoa, he's going to go crazy right now. Got to turn that off really quick. Okay. So uh, now I want to control the speed. Right now it's at 100% brightness. That's way too quick for this motor. I actually, yeah, that's way too fast. So what you're going to go into is you're going to go to your color side right here, highlight all your timing marks, go to the color, right click on it, bulk at it, and choose something. Probably we're going to start with something like maybe 40, just to see how that looks. And then we're going to turn that back on and see how that looks. That's much better. Where are we? There we go. Just back this up a little bit. Turn this up. There. There you go. So now he's. That's uh, so cool, Keith. Yeah, it's pretty fun. And now basically, you now have whenever the timing marks go, it dances. It dances when it sings. So, I mean, that's just. And so then now that's all. So I choose. I, I picked that whole timing mark um, and I chose all one speed, right? Well, I know the beginning of the song is kind of slow and then right around here, it starts picking up. So let's go back right, right here. Let's choose this part and let's go back to our bulk edit and let's bring this up to maybe, let's try 40, let's make an actual difference. Let's do 50. So now I'm gonna render really quick. and then I'm gonna get the motion. So then as you see, the motion's at 40%, it's going kind of slow. But we can't see that. Oh, sorry, you're right. There you go. So, you know, it's going this speed and then right after that, it song picks up and we start going quicker. Boom. Of course, that table's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you get the idea. You can really, you can even get even more advanced. If I just want this part to be quicker uh, and this part, this other part to be slower, I can do all that using the brightness. Um, a lot of versatility and speed uh, and control thanks to X lights and the Pixel 2 Thins board. Um, before I go and show how to import, timing marks which is a lot easier uh, anybody else have any questions yeah i have two questions okay question one uh if you're putting this out in your yard what are you looking to mount it with like putting in putting it in the ground because obviously that that looked like it was shaking a little bit it, it uh it, it kind of does a little bit, but because uh, it, it's on the hardwood floors, but usually when it's out in the yard, the ground's a little bit more saturated, it stays. But you can also get kind of U stakes, U stakes. Okay. Stake it in the ground. I also use, uh, when I go out and do stuff at my dad's property, he gets a lot of wind um, at a certain angle. And so we use lag screws, big 18 inch lag screws. And we just drill that right into the ground. And that makes it, it's even easier than rebar. Cause then you just drill it in and then drill it out at the end of the year. Right. And then, and then the second question is, do you like put some kind of covering or something off the over motor? the, over the motor and mounting thing, or you just let people know, Hey, there's a motor there and it's moving it. Yeah, no. So um, you bring a great point. You know, we, that's something that you have to think about when you're creating these animatronic props and you're starting to have people come to your show and get, the closer they're going to get and more interactive it is, you got to think about that. The motors, that's points of areas where hair can get stuck. Fingers can get uh, jammed and stuff like that. So that's a great point. Um, I've seen uh, in the Halloween community kind of... Um, uh, spoke or fender kind of designs where they kind of built a you know trash bag over that kind of a thing or 
Um, but yeah, there's w- ways you're going to have to do that. I haven't ran into that yet. Um, just because a lot of my props are about 20 feet away from the road. So I, I don't, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 everything is pushed back in my yard, so there's no way anybody gets to my yard. I mean, they can come up the driveway, but they, they, they still can't get to the yard to the actual display. But I was just thinking just for, you know, yeah, just for the looks yeah um uh, it to be honest i would spray paint a trash bag maybe look kind of like a santa bag and then put it over it okay well i saw that you also spray it looks like you spray painted that from white to black too oh yeah that that's more for that's a definite (laughs) yeah that's a definite just because oh my god people's eyes would just get fixed up on the white right yeah exactly (laughs) yeah they're just the 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 suspension of disbelief would get lost right away so (laughs) like especially at nighttime this with all the leds that that white pvc is just like neon light you know um what's your second question uh, that was the second. That was the second oh, question. Um, sorry, brain fart. That's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, P- I always suggest spray painting your PVC. I asked Brian on his uh, his thing about um, uh, PVC and spraying and stuff like that. You sounds like the the go to is UV resistant um, uh, spray paint. Um, and uh, but I mean that's only if you really are acceptable to UV uh, pen. You know a lot of uv rays during that time of the year where you're going to have your props out um i do so and I, i've i've had situations where my props i pulled them out and then the pvc was brittle so now that i spray paint them i don't have that problem so i always suggest doing that um so so, so you uv uv spray uh spray paint yeah 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 i think i wind up using like rust-oleum <laughs> for most of mine i mean I mean, it's worked. It works. I mean, but if there's something better, of course. Yeah, any any yeah. kind of spray paint is going to prolong your PVC because you're going to protect the actual PVC with the paint. Um, if you can't find UV protectant spray paint, any layer is going to add the pro uh, is going to add to the the uh, length of the how long it's going to last. So okay, well, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm in South Florida, so I, I get. I get hot weather all year, all year long. <laughs> well, and let, let me let me make a suggestion too, because one of the things that I did when I created my um, uh, holders and I used PVC, I actually went and bought PVC pipe stain or dye, there you and go. I dyed them because the dye actually goes in there and then it doesn't peel off or anything. I mean, it's yes, once you dye. It's on there. I remember somebody suggesting that for uh, house outlines. And I was like, wow, that, that makes sense. I've seen that before in an in industry standard for PVC. And yeah, it just basically uh, solidifies it to the PVC itself. It's not like a coating on top of it. It actually like almost gets absorbed by the plastic, right? Question. Right, exactly. And, and the thing about it is too, is that it comes in a multitude of colors like red yellow green blue black and i mean so you can actually dye it to whatever color that you want and it's a dye that you mix with i believe either mineral spirits or um acetone or something like that it it, it explains it in there but it's the same thing that you would use for when you're dyeing your um, pieces for your furniture grade for pvc and stuff like that but i've always used that and it's been great Santa Dave made it into my notebook, Keith. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, so, I wrote that so, down, buddy. <laughs> so that was PVC dye or stain? Yeah, it's, it's a stain or a dye. Okay, and, in fact, and, and there's, there's one. There's one yeah, place that, that I actually there's a place that I get it from, and it's called. Uh, well, let me just spell it real quick, and it's really easy. It's make m a k e z as in zebra i n e dot com so make zen dot com and if you go in there they've got stain and dye and it's multicolored and the stuff is it's great and it makes it permanent okay would would home depot or lowe's have it too or no no i, no. I have not found anything like that for a dye because that's like a special kind of 
there's no reason that they would have a die other than like the purple for when you're you know yeah right to glue the pieces and stuff like that but yeah this is an actual die that you mix and then in fact i bought a pvc pipe that um is 10 foot long so that when i do my 10 foot long pieces i do one set i just dump it into there, I shake it up in the tube, and then I pull it out and let it dry. And it is, to me, I don't like painting it because it, it seems like it leaves like a, the brush marks on it. Whereas if I stick it in another PVC pipe, shake it up and pull it out, it's got a perfect coating on it. I have a question to keep. Yeah. Sure. I noticed that on your uh, bulb there, that uh, neither of those washers are painted to match the bulb. <laughs> God, give me a hard time. No, I, <laughs> yeah, I just haven't found the right color to match yet. I'd at least paint them black. Yeah, I just, it, you know, it's it's surprisingly enough, it's not noticeable. Um, you know, it, we were talking about how the PVC white is very noticeable and it could suspend disbelief. I don't, I didn't find that with the washers yet. Oh, on the piping, just get PV, you can just get plastic paint. It goes on there with spray paint, works yep. just fine. So, so yeah. Okay. It, I mean, can I ask yeah. one more question? Yes. Um, those motors, do they ever generate heat? You know, you guys were talking about covering it or, or to try to hide it. Do you have yeah. to worry about generating heat? Yeah, um, that, that's a good point. Um, I, I do, there is, especially if you use the high settings for a lot of these motors, they will generate quite a bit of heat. Luckily, um, we're not really having them for long stands, a long period of constant running. Uh, a lot of these things are simple timings on and off. So luckily the heat isn't an issue. Um, plus when we're putting these props out here, it's usually during the cold times of the year. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. You, you're all, no matter what, same with your controllers, right? You don't want to suffocate your controllers. Um, right. Yeah, so same philosophy. Okay. Hey, Just Keith, I got one quick question if we got some time. Okay, and then Mike had a question too, so um, go, go on. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, my question is, are, do you have a cut list for the PVC uh, for your frame that you built? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I Something could barely hear him. Cutting PVC? A cut, he said a hey. cut list. Or your PVC list. that you like lengths and patterns of all oh, the yes. design. Yeah, yeah. So I'll ha I'll have that in my PDF. I had basically the uh, sizings that you're gonna need, the lengths. But yeah, I don't have the actual like the drawings themselves yet. Um, but yeah, it, uh, in the PDF, um, I'll show that really quick. Uh, I do have the especially for the leaping arch. I have the exact lengths already set up here. And it'll be in the YouTube video that we're streaming to right now. Uh, it'll be on there. You can pause it, take a screenshot if you don't want to take a screenshot right now. Uh, that's what I did. <laughs> so I grabbed them. Yeah, and I, I will throw all this on the website uh, either today or tomorrow. Um, and it, it's it's going to have a lot of information because I definitely dropped the ball on some things. Um, will, that be, will that be the Christmas Summit website? Yes, it will. It will be the Christmas Summit website, and all that information is going to be in the parts list for this uh, project. And is that where the PDF will be as well? Yes, I'm gonna, we'll have the PDF thrown in there too. It, it will basically be the YouTube video with the mechanics, that really great video YouTube video, the PDF, and then the Leaping Arch, and then the Rocker part list with schematics. Okay. And how do we reach out to you when we really want to start doing this? <laughs> I'm always available on Facebook me uh, Messenger. You could just message me. My name is Keith Pepper. Um, I also have a photography website and a um, and my also my Christmas light um, Facebook page, Ultimate Holiday Lights. Ultimate Holiday Lights. Okay. The, uh, it's actually Ultimate. So I'll, I'll oh, put because I live in all Florida. No, I live in California. Oh, <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> hey, All hey. right, Mike. You got your hand up, Mike? He was he was just talking. Oh, was that? Oh, shoot. Sorry, my bad. So, yeah, this is Ultima Holiday Lights right here at the bottom. And I'm not sharing my screen, so. I... 
I was trying to create shortcuts with my buttons here where I could just press a button and just do that. But, oh, two people are raising their hands. Um, yeah, Bill. Bill first and then Jack. Hey, yeah, Keith, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, my intention for this motor is to like attach it fully to it and align to use like a flying ghost or something like that. So you said these motors were pretty torquey. Do you think it could handle something like that? I mean, obviously. Yeah, actually, uh, JR did something uh, like that, too. He actually had what? what's that character from um, Nightmare Before Christmas? Yeah, the dog. They said it like 10 times. Yeah, the nine. Oh, nine zero, the dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, thank you. Yeah, so we had that kind of going through the yard. It was freaking awesome. And it was uh -oh. about a 30, almost a 50 foot run that oh, it, yeah. it ran from the motor to the building on a, a loop and went he, back and forth. And then he even had stops. He used, um, uh, God, what he used? He used, uh, some the kind limit. of, uh, uh, limit switches yep. so then when the thing got to the end the limit switch would activate it wait for a few seconds and send it right back up and this is on jr matos's site yeah yeah okay well, on the site that. well that's he he did in his personal display but okay I mean, you know i'm sure his designs hey, and his ideas are out there <laughs> sweet all right thanks hey keith uh, it's 4 27 they're going to be doing the drawings at 4 30 in the other room Oh, I thought we were going until I have. I'm set supposedly to go another half an hour, but yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Let I don't me... want to take any more of your time. I think I've touched on everything. If anybody wants to stay back to ask me any more questions, I will be here. Let's do the drawing, Brian. Okay. Oh, sorry. Hang on. I feel really bad. Jack had a question. Uh, uh, so let's go to Jack really quick with his question before going on. Oh, no, this is a, a pretty stupid question. I just popped in to see what this this class was on. So I don't know if you I'm, I'm sure that you touched on this before, but I was just wondering on the uh, weatherproofing of the motors. Yeah, well, we can go over that uh, after uh, the drawing. So Brian, yeah. do the drawing, then we'll, I'll go back to um, Jack with your question. All right. Uh, stop your share yeah, screen. Just about to do and that. I'm going to go ahead.